Hi, welcome to Online Advantage. I'm Professor Gonzalez. The topic today is Financial Accounting Conceptual Framework. This is the underlining foundation of the accounting standards for financial accounting. First, we're gonna look at a chart that basically shows the main objective of financial reporting. So the main objective is to make the financial reports and the disclosures useful for investors and creditors. And we do that by having elements of the financial reports. Those elements you're familiar with, assets, liabilities, owner, equity, cash flows, gains and losses. And from there, we prepare financial statements and the notes to the financial statements, the disclosures. So we have qualitative characteristics and recognition and measurement. And that's what we're gonna focus on today when we are applying the rules or standards related to the elements and to the financial reports. And always keeping in mind the purpose is to make the financial reports useful to the investors and creditors. As we're doing all of this, we always have a main constraint and that constraint is cost. So the benefit of applying the standards shouldn't be outweighing the cost. Starting off with qualitative characteristics. The first is relevance. The information needs to be important and useful in making decisions to the investors. In order to do that, it has to have predictive value. So when an investor, for example, looks at the income statement and they look at trends, they should be able to try to predict future revenue and expenses and future cash flows from it. It needs to be confirmatory meaning any predictions that they've made, they should be able to look to the financial reports and confirm their predictions. We always look at materiality. Materiality has to do with an amount. If we misstate it or if we omit it, would it cause the users of the financial statements to make a different decision? Would an investor decide not to invest or to invest if we omit or misstate a piece of information? Now, there's no specific amount set by the FASB. That is a judgment item for accountants. And a lot of times it is related to the size of the company. So the next part of qualitative characteristics is faithful representation. We need to accurately reflect the condition of the business. To do that, first of all, completeness. When we report information, we need to accurately describe it. For example, if we have accounts receivable, that's a current asset. It will be in the current asset section. So we need to accurately describe it in the financial statements. We have to apply neutrality. It should be free from bias. We should not be trying to manipulate the users into making a specific decision. And it should be free from error. Now that doesn't mean there's no errors. That means that we are appropriately applying the estimates and the principles that we set up in order to eliminate as much error as we possibly can from the financial reporting. Enhancing is the next category of qualitative characteristics. This is like adding even more useful to the financial information. They need to be comparable. Comparability means across time. So if I'm looking at one year to the next, there should be comparability so I can compare them. I should be using the same estimates, the same principles. And if I do change them, it needs to be disclosed. It also needs to be comparable to other companies. So if I were comparing two soft drink companies, for example, I should be able to compare them because they're using the same accounting principles. And again, there's disclosures to let me know any differences. Verifiability. That means that if another accountant were to look at the same data, they would come up with the same similar conclusion. Example would be if they were applying uh, FIFO, first in, first out to inventory, they would come up with the same amount as far as the amount of inventory reported on the financial statements. Timeliness. Financial reports have to be distributed timely. So that's why for publicly traded companies, there's quarterly filing requirements. So the information has gotten out as quickly as possible. The belief is the faster the information is given to the investors and creditors, the faster they can make decisions. If the information is old, they can't make decisions as quickly. And understandability. Someone with a reasonable knowledge of business and economics and somebody who's willing to do some research should be able to understand the financial statements and disclosures. Okay, now we're gonna move on to recognition, measurement, and disclosure concepts. We're starting with assumptions. We have the economic entity assumption. Sometimes that's called the separate entity assumption, which means the owner's financial statements or financial information should be kept separate from the company, the entity. Going concern, we are always assuming that the company is going to go on until the next period. It's not gonna go bankrupt and, and we have to be liquidated. We assume the operations will continue on to the next accounting period. Periodicity, we divide our revenue and our expenses into artificial time periods, such as months, quarters, and years. 
And the last one is monetary unit. So we record in currency, dollars, euros, uh, whatever currency that the company is incorporated in. Next is principles, revenue recognition principle. So revenue recognition, that means that revenue is recognized when goods or services are delivered to customers. We may do it at a point in time. So if a customer comes into the store and purchases a can of green beans off the shelf and walks out, we are recognizing the revenue at that time when the actual inventory item was delivered to the customer. It could also be a period of time. If it is like rent, it's over a time period for services. Uh, and it could also be a period of time such as earned revenue. But sometimes we get cash in advance before we do any service. And as we do services over time, we'll recognize the revenue. Another great example of that is like memberships at warehouse club companies where you have to pay a membership and we recognize the revenue over time. Expense recognition. Expenses are recognized when incurred and in the period benefited. Now expense recognition, we have the matching principle, which we're trying to get the expense into the same time period as the revenue it helped generate. So we're trying to get that, for example, in the same month or in the same year. We also sometimes have expenses though that we have to look at periods of time, like advertising. It's hard to determine exactly what revenue advertising is associated with. So sometimes we'll just put that into time periods. The other one would be expenses when they incurred such as utilities, when we have it, when we actually have the utilities that we're using, we would put that into the month in which the utilities happened. Another one is a systematic approach, such as depreciation. The plant assets, as they're getting used up, we will depreciate them using a systematic approach. So that is also an expense, depreciation expense. So there's many ways to look at the expense recognition. Mixed attribute measurement. What this means is that we use the appropriate attribute to measure an item on the financial statements. For example, our plant assets, like our buildings and automobiles, are on our financial statements, usually at cost. Then we, our inventory would be at net realizable value. Our bonds would be at present value. So that's the different measurements that we can use, and we try to do it so that is useful information to the users. Full disclosure is the next one, meaning that anything that could cause a decision maker to make a different decision must be disclosed. Example, contingent liabilities. If there is a contingency, even if we can't estimate the amount, but we think that something's going to happen, maybe a big lawsuit, big recall, something, it needs to be disclosed in the financial statements, in the disclosures. Okay, to summarize, we have a main objective in the framework. The main objective is the information that we disclose and the financial statements must be useful to the decision makers. And our focus is on investors and creditors. Our overlying criteria is to think about the qualitative characteristics and the recognition and measurement of the elements that go into the financial statements and disclosures. Thank you very much for watching. Please click on Advantage logo to subscribe.